Hey there guys, it's TC Made with TC Gaming. Wanted to bring you another video in our basic RPG series, but I also want to talk a little bit about the action RPG game. Um, I did a series on this a long time ago, back when I was in like 425, 426 maybe. Um, after 427, they stopped updating the project. And, you know, of course, when 5.0 Preview came out, you could still open it and upgrade it, but... Uh, shortly after that, it kind of disappeared again, and uh, just recently saw a tutorial on the um, forums that explained how to update that to 5.0. Now, the reason I want to do that real quick is because in my previous video in the action RPG or in the RPG series, rather, I did a uh, little bit of an example on a HUD and some of the uh, UI elements that were on there, and one of the comments was, you know. The way that the progress bars are hooked up, that they're constantly polling for information from the character, and that's an inefficient method of doing that. Really, what would be better is if we used some of the interface calls, um, and you know, whenever there's a, an update event, that you would actually have a listener or whatever and say, oh, your value over here has changed. Let me push that value to the UI, to the HUD. And there's a great example of that inside of the Action RPG series. The other thing is, if anybody happens to pick up the Action RPG series, uh, wants to run through it, I'm going to put this same video in there of how to update this to uh, 5.0 so you could continue down the path of learning with that example if you wanted to. So this is going to be kind of a two-fold video, one to just touch up a little bit on the previous things and also the second to leverage this Action RPG stuff so we can talk about it. So in your vault, if you don't have the Action RPG kit here, what you can do is if you go to Samples out of your launcher, you scroll down... Um, You'll see Action RPG over here. Action RPG, as I said, stopped getting updated in 4.27, but you should still be able to get these files. And I think if you can't get this in here, you can also go into Library under the Epic Games content and locate it in there. It's pretty much uh, you know standard. But here's how we're going to do it. So if we if we downloaded this and ready to go, we're going to say Create Project. Now you have to have 4.27 installed. If you don't have 427 installed, the way you can do that is you come up here and you say engine versions, add new engine, and then over here you can pick what version of that engine you want to install, and I already have 427 in here, so I'm not going to worry about that. But what we would do is we'd go down here and say create project, 427, and we'll just leave it at the default location for this example, and say create. Now the other thing you'll need for this is uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, and you can use the Community Edition of Microsoft Visual Studio. So, if I go in here and let's look at Microsoft Visual Studio, just type in like Community Edition, and then there'll be downloads for like 2019, 2022, whatever. Uh, so if you go in here, you should normally be able to find Community as a free download and just go through the process of installing this. I cover this in other, um, in other videos as well. But the one thing you definitely want to do when you install this, there's an option in there for what types of packages you want to deploy. And you want to put the one in there for games and for C++ development. And there's uh, there's a thing that says like literally C++ development for Unreal Engine. You'll see it during the installation process. If you have any questions about it, you can always just send some comments or whatever. I can always do an uh, another video just around uh, that particular thing. But after you download this and download the other package um, and you create your Action RPG project, you should be able to go right click on it and say show in folder. And then in the Action RPG folder if you right click on the um on the u file you can go down here and say edit with like notepad or notepad plus plus um if you scroll down there's going to be some plugins in here that are no longer valid in 5.0 so if you scroll down through this on the bottom here the one you want to get rid of is called Chaos. Yeah, let's just see Chaos. Uh, just got to find it in here. I thought I just saw it a second ago. May already be turned off, actually. Audio caption. Let's see. Uh, 
Well, here, we'll find out by just uh, doing it. So, um, hold this idea of actually editing this for a second. So the easy thing would be right click on this and say switch engine version and switch us over to 5.0 and then okay. It'll go through and generate project files as long as you have the um, Unreal Engine or have the uh, Microsoft SQL or Microsoft <laughs> Visual Studio installed, and then you have this SLN file. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and try and launch this, and it should tell me it failed to launch. And if we go in here to the Edit with Notepad, again, this is where we're going to have to disable a couple of um, things. I thought one of them was called, yeah, Slate Remote is one of them. And I thought the other one was called, hey, I said it, maybe it's just Slate Remote. So, um, you could do a couple things here. Easy thing is to just go slate remote enabled equals false and save that. And then see if that'll launch, still fail to launch. So, what we do is we try and open up the action RPG SLN file. Now, this SLN file might still have a reference that slate. So, actually, what we probably should do before we do this is let's go back. We'll try and build it, but if it doesn't build, then we'll we'll clear that uh, reference out of there. So basically, when you open this, you don't have to really do too much. Just let it kind of run and get loaded up in the background. And you just come up to the Build button and go to Build Solution. And let it run through, and it should go down and, and create uh, all the references that you need. Let's give it a second. This will take just a minute, so I'll be right back. Okay, and if everything goes well, what you should get at the end of this, you should see a thing that says build succeeded. So we'll minimize this and see if we can open this now. And it looks like that did the trick. That should get us into our editor for 5.0. So we'll just give this a second. Shouldn't take too long. It's actually kind of a lightweight package considering how much stuff's going on in there. Now there's also an instruction to upgrade this from 5.0 to um, 5.1. So real quick, I'll show you this reference in here. If you go into the community, you know, for uh, the learning section of Epic, Basically, if you come out here and you go to learn courses and, Utor courses and utilities, you take you into the same section, and then there's a uh, search up here. You can search for action RPG or updating action RPG. And the um, person you thank for this is LFA. I don't know who that is, but LFA put this out there. And this is basically what we just did. So updating action RPG from UE 427 to 5.0, create a new project, open it up, disable MDL and slate remote plugins. I didn't see MDL in there. Uh, restart it to update the project file and close the project. Now we didn't do it this way. We just disabled it right inside of the, um, of the U project file. That's essentially the same thing. If you disable it in the U project file, it doesn't try to open it in the first place. It's effectively the same as modifying it in engine. So then you right click on the project file, change the engine version, open Visual Studio and build the solution. So that's what we did to get this to run. So now you have a copy of the action RPG game here. And if you've never played this before, it's actually a pretty fun project. And if you are inclined, if you want to learn, excuse me, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, sorry about that. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, if you go to YouTube and actually go to my videos, I did have a playlist in here for Action RPG. Uh, it's called the Exploring Action RPG series. And there's some pretty decent videos in here. And then I also had some links that I left in for things like the gameplay ability system and uh, other things that pertain to this project. So you may want to update that to 5.0 and go through that series and get as far as I did and probably even further than what I did uh, pretty easily and also check out this gameplay ability system. It's a, it's a really robust uh, package. So 
now that we're in here, what I want to show you real quick, the, the whole point of this thing with the UI, like we talked about earlier, if you go into the content directory, or actually, let me just, uh, let me hit play on here, and then I'll probably have to turn this down. So the volume's like on here. Might not even make noise on there. Just making sure I don't have my desktop audio too loud. Doesn't look like it's registered anyway. So anyway, if you're on here, you can play this, uh, you know, with a joystick or with your mouse. The F11 that, so it's a little bit easier to say. But the whole idea is, you hit F8. Nothing like that. All right, so go back to the main menu. The um, whole idea, though, is it's got a really nice sample here. And I don't know if I can pause this. But you see you have health and mana bars there at the bottom of the screen, right? So our health and mana bars are in the UI folder. And if you go to, it's either UI or is there a HUD in here somewhere? UI, let's go see what the basic UI is. Blueprints, Widget BP, and then there is a HUD package here, and you have a HUD for mobile or for PC, so if you open up the one for PC, you'll see your health and mana bars. So these are similar to the ones we built before, but the difference in here is if you go to the graph, these actually have events in here to update their their um, values. And so this HUD is getting updated. Should be one in here for update. Uh, let's see if there's a event graph in here for updating set health points. So this comes in from iHUD. If you see this little icon, that's an interface icon, right? So there's an interface that gets called that to call that event to set the HP for my HUD and percentage set percent and then the targets the progress bar. So this is getting called from this little widget interface over here called iHUD. And there's your your different little functions that you can add in here. So set HP, set mana, you know, et cetera. And on the um Probably in here, if you look at the example for the game, not there, but under selected game mode, there should be a, I thought there was a thing in here for, let's go BP game mode. Yeah, and then you can see all the different controllers. So then there's a controller class here. It's either under the controller class where you're updating this is see if there's anything in here create HUD might even be on your player character which in here P player character usually these things are either on your player character or on your player controller there's your update health bar so update health bar is, uh, you, you know, again, whenever something happens, it has to update your health bar. You would call this, so there's, there'd be an event handler, like a listener for this. Um, anytime it would change health, it's going to call this update health bar, and that's going to go and call this iHUD target for setting the HP using the interface for, you know, getting your health and getting your max health and updating that on the screen. So if you, if you walk through this and kind of... You know, you could put a thing on here and say toggle breakpoint, and every time your health atrophies off, let's just go ahead and get hit. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so that fires into the update health event. And then inside of these, if you've never stepped through them, you can see there's these little step into and step throughs. Um, I think usually it's F8 is the one. So that's going to run there, and then that's taking you into that um, thing, but you can see that you're in the function for that. It checks to see if you're alive. 
and then goes to the player character branch, you know, does all the things it has to do, and then basically runs out there to uh, the update health event. It keeps going down through it. But you can basically run through here and check these all out. And again, they're, they're fantastic examples to learn from. We could leverage this pretty easily and uh, update that in a, a future episode. But again, I just wanted to bring you something here real quick. So if you get a chance, check out the action RPG series I did a while ago using the converted version of the project for 5.0 and understand the interface version of the health bars that we put on there. Definitely more optimal. Um, if you were building a, a bigger package game, that's definitely the way to go. For these little experiments and stuff like that, of course you could do it however you want to just for proof of concept, but you know, you always wanna think about optimization for long-term and larger projects. So uh, again, my name's TC Made with TC Gaming. I'll be getting back with some more actual videos uh, for the RPG series um, very, very soon. Again, I had some health issues and some other stuff going on, so. Thanks for bearing with me while I uh, recover and get back to it. Thanks, and have a great Christmas if I'm not back before then. Take care.